So recently, a video that I recorded a while ago on cultural Marxism has gotten pretty popular. It's now my most viewed video. Um, and this channel doesn't really deal with those things very much. It's primarily a channel about theology, though delving into some philosophy and cultural Marxism kind of goes into that to an extent. But it's definitely not the thing that I focus on. This is not a, you know, anti-social justice warrior channel or something like a lot of channels on YouTube are. Um, but I did address the issue of cultural Marxism just because it's a very prominent uh, part of just our discussions in society today. And I think it's something that we need to have a handle on and understand what these issues are uh, as we engage in those, because it does it is something that influences basically all of academia today, especially if you're going into humanities, and it does impact theology and philosophy uh, in the fields that, that I study primarily as well. Uh, so, you know, I, I've noticed something though recently, and this is clear in the comments on that video, and don't read the comments. <laughs> They're really, uh, see, kind of the comments on the video are, are twofold. Basically, you have, um, those who are claiming that there's a vast Jewish conspiracy behind cultural Marxism to destroy the West, um, which is certainly not the perspective that I'm coming from in the slightest. Um, and then on the other hand, you have people that are commenting who are from a more progressive or liberal perspective that say cultural Marxism doesn't exist. It's basically just this right wing uh, conspiracy. So I wanted to just briefly make this video addressing the question, is cultural Marxism just a right-wing conspiracy or is it a real thing? Is it something that we actually need to be concerned about or is it something that people have just recently made up? Because you get this impression, and there are YouTube videos about this as well, that have gotten pretty popular. And so the claim is just repeated over and over again nowadays that cultural Marxism is something that doesn't really exist. It's a figment of the imagination of, of the right-wing and it's something that people just made up to just kind of have a label to easily dismiss the other side uh, by just labeling them cultural Marxists without much thought at all. Now, it is the case, certainly, that the term can be misused because any term can be misused. And, and, and just in popular discourse over ideas, people tend to misuse terms and people tend to mislabel others by boxing people into a particular ideology or another without really doing probably the proper reading and research necessary to really deal with these ideas in depth. So sure, is it the case that there are white supremacists? Is it the case that there are anti-Semites who use the term cultural Marxism to defend their ideas and dismiss basically anyone who has an opposing idea who used the concept wrongly. Yes, certainly that's the case. You can read comments on any video about cultural Marxism and you see these kind of anti-Semitic uh, ideas. And it certainly doesn't help the case uh, because it does make it look like this fringe conception that these radical white supremacist anti-Semites have um, come up with. And certainly I, I reject every single aspect of those ideologies completely 100%. Um, and no, I, I you know I, I don't think that we need to uh, buy into some kind of conspiracy that there is this vast Jewish movement to try to overthrow Western civilization. I don't believe that in the slightest. Um, but that doesn't mean that cultural Marxism as an ideology doesn't exist. And it doesn't mean just because people who are radical use an, an idea uh, or criticize an idea that all criticisms of that idea are therefore false. So, where can we find evidence that this idea of cultural Marxism exists? And in the video on cultural Marxism, I just gave a very brief overview. I basically talked about Karl Marx um, and, and then the utilization of his ideas about oppression and, and privilege. He uses it in, in economic terms. And then the fact that the school of thought known as uh, critical theory coming from the Frankfurt School in Frankfurt, Germany, they use a, a lot of the Marxist kind of ideas, but move beyond just the economic issues to talk about cultural critique in general. And they develop this thing called critical theory. But critical th theory coming out of the Frankfurt School was not just an isolated case. It's not just that there was this small group of intellectuals intellectuals at one particular time and in one area of Europe that adopted Marx's ideas and in, in applied them to culture, uh, but there were similar ideas happening in other areas of Europe as well. Uh, and so you have what's known as called the Birmingham School of Thought, which arises in England in the 1960s. And that school of thought continues a lot of the same ideas from the Frankfurt School, and this is the birth of cultural studies in England. So the birth of cultural studies then leads to these Marxist ideas being applied to culture. And the term cultural Marxism is used in dealing with uh, scholarship. When you look at scholarship on that particular 
school of thought, um, those who even promote those ideas do use the term cultural Marxism. And, and really, it doesn't take that much research to do. You can just go on, on Google Scholar, scholar.google.com, look up cultural Marxism. You can find essays, articles, books, all sorts of things that use that term. Uh, so Douglas Kellner, who's a professor at UCLA, who has done a lot of work uh, on critical theory as well as postmodernism, is a proponent of those ideas. He has an essay, for example, called Cultural Marxism and Cultural Studies. You could just get this literally by looking it up on Google and you can read it and he traces the history of a lot of these ideas and throughout he uses the term cultural Marxism to define what he's talking about. Um, and then through this Birmingham school as well you can find uh, several books and articles on it that do use the term cultural Marxism. If you look up again, Google Scholar, the first result, Cultural Marxism and Post-War Britain, History, the New Left, and the Origins of Cultural Studies, which deals with the birth of cultural studies throughout the 1960s in British universities, specifically in Birmingham. But then but this is not some right-wing conspiracy. This is not some anti-Semitic conspiracy. These are those who actually promote those ideas who are using the term cultural Marxism. You can find uh, another sociological text from 1981 called Cultural Marxism and Political Sociology. You can look that up yourself. And if you just look on, you know, JSTOR, EBSCOhost, you, you look on just a lot of the most popular sites where you can access scholarly articles. If you look up Cultural Marxism, you can find all sorts of articles. Now, Cultural Marxism as something that the right is criticizing, again, is also not new. And you get these ideas today, especially on YouTube, that this is some right-wing conspiracy. People just made up this idea in recent years to attack you know, progressivism just in these very heated times of cultural debate in the Trump era. That is not true. Uh, if you look at somebody like Roger Scruton and his work, he got himself into quite a bit of trouble uh, at one time for criticizing cultural Marxism. But he's spoken out about these ideas for many years. He's not a some kind of radical... Um, you know, anti-Semite hiding in a corner somewhere. He was a professor at, at Oxford. Uh, he is a sir, meaning he has been knighted, Sir Roger Scruton. He is somebody who is, is an eminent um, academic writer of philosophy, specifically philosophy of aesthetics and other things as well. So um, you can find on both sides of the spectrum, those who are proponents of things like critical theory and uh, of progressive ideals using the term cultural Marxism, going back um, to the 1980s, at least using this terminology. And you can find those who are from a conservative perspective using the term as something to criticize. It goes back quite a long time. So it really just shows the lack of research that people have when they buy into these ideas, where people just you know watch maybe a video or two on, on YouTube or hear something and then just endlessly repeat it. So somebody heard some left leaning person just say, oh, cultural Marxism is a right-wing anti-Semitic conspiracy. And then that's just repeated and it's repeated and it's repeated and it's repeated. And there's no actual thought that goes into it. So no, it's not a, a conspiracy. It's a real thing. Um, you know, whatever your position on cultural Marxism is, whether you think it's a good thing or a bad thing, it's a thing. You can't deny the fact that it, well, you can, you can do anything you want, but um, you, you can't honestly and sincerely deny that it exists. It does exist and it's out there do a little bit of research. I mean, this is a Google search. That That's it. I mean, you, you know, especially when you're dealing with, with academic things, you think you'd actually spend some time doing some research going into academic libraries before you make these just broad statements. This is something that's just made up and is not part of academia. It is. It has been for a long time. I came across this term when I was doing some basic reading on gender studies and um, feminist studies, trying to figure out what happened and caused all of those things to happen. They use these terms all of a sudden. Now it's a vast conspiracy. It never was in the past. Everybody just used it. It's a thing. We've got to recognize it. Let's study it. Let's look at what it is. And then let's engage those ideas. And I say let's criticize them because I think they're extremely problematic and um, just the way that we've developed in Western culture in recent years in certain areas. So thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. We'll see you next time. God bless.